When you think of deserts of the Middle East, Northern Africa, and the surrounding areas, oftentimes what comes to mind is a dry, barren landscape that's void of life. But those that have spent time in this admittedly harsh environment know that this unique ecosystem is filled with a vast array of organisms that call it home. So today I wanted to talk about one of the most amazing giant reptiles that claims this area as its own, the Desert Monitor, as well as one of its mind-boggling relatives that I'm willing to bet money you didn't know existed. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you go down there and hit the subscribe button as well as make sure that notification bell is clicked. If you like these kinds of videos, then smash that like button and comment down below what species you want to see on here next. Discovered in 1803 by French zoologist Francois-Marie Dodin, the Desert Monitor is a large lizard hailing from Northern Africa, the Middle East, and even as far as India. The Desert Monitor is part of the group Varanus, which is the family of monitor lizards, which includes the largest lizards on the planet. The scientific name of the Desert Monitor is Varanus griseus, and under this there are three subspecies, Varanus griseus griseus, which is the gray monitor, Varanus griseus caspius, which is the Caspian monitor, and Varanus griseus konechne, which is the Indian desert monitor, which is the most endangered of the subspecies. I don't know who came up with that Latin name, man. That's, that's a tough one. These large monitors display earth tone colors, sometimes having black banding or even yellow spots to blend in with the landscape of the desert. These animals grow from 1 to 2 meters in length or about 3 to 6 feet, with the exception of the Indian desert monitor. This species seldom reaches a meter in length. These animals all possess long, muscular tails, sharp claws, and one of the most impressive features, which are their specially adapted teeth that allow them to be such successful hunters. While the desert monitor is preyed upon by a couple of species, such as the golden eagle and other large raptors, they occupy a spot quite high on the food chain and are extremely successful at hunting. Just looking at the body of these animals, they're streamlined and lean, which allows them to stay nimble while on the hunt. Large, powerful muscles are present everywhere on this lizard's body, from the tail to the back to its legs. It uses those powerful legs to make bursts of speed at prey items that may be darting into burrows or up trees, such as invertebrates, small rodents, and other reptiles like Euromastix, which are its favorite food. It has powerful front limbs for digging burrows of its own, and a muscular neck that allows it to whip its head around with lightning speed, both to survey areas or to thrash prey about. The teeth of the desert monitor are very peculiar, while these monitors don't have the largest teeth of all lizards, those belong to the croc monitor, their teeth are some of the most interesting in the monitor world. They are extremely sharp as they come to a point and are backwards facing when in the mouth. But the interesting thing about them is that unlike most other monitor species, the teeth of the desert monitor are bilaterally compressed and serrated towards the back, almost like shark teeth. These serrated edges have a couple of capabilities. One, it may give these monitors the ability to cut through prey more effectively which can deepen wounds and increase bleeding. But the more interesting feature is the grooves along the teeth may actually function as channels for the desert monitor's venom to flow into open wounds on their prey. What was once thought in many monitor species to simply be bacteria in the saliva is now known to be a type of venom. The function of this venom differs between species, but the desert monitor's venom causes excessive bleeding and inhibits the blood's ability to clot. While the range of these lizards is wide, the majority of people who live outside of their native range have no idea that these animals even exist. Since 1975, CITES, an organization focused on international trade of exotic animals, has listed these desert monitors as endangered, which is the main reason why they are so scarce in captivity. Conversely, IUCN, which does not deal with the animal trade, has not yet evaluated this species, so outside of poaching for the exotic animal trade, the desert monitor is not protected and this has shown in their numbers in the wild. But why are their numbers declining if their range is so large and extensive? In their native range, the desert monitor is readily exterminated by locals for a couple reasons. Those main reasons are fear, food, and for their skin. Many people who encounter these lizards are taken back by both their sheer size and admittedly menacing appearance. And most of these lizards that are seen around housing, schools, or other places where children are present are usually killed on sight. They're also readily eaten by those that actively hunt them and are unfortunately a large part of the skin trade. 
Another reason for the decline of the desert monitor is habitat loss. Unfortunately, this is becoming all too common for many species across the globe, but the building of roads, housing developments, and urbanization as a total have taken a massive toll on the population of Varanus griseus. Although the desert monitor as a species is no doubt declining in number, their species is still not beyond saving by any means. Some areas have healthy populations of these lizards, and other places they have basically been exterminated altogether. It's up to us to raise awareness for them, and to not villainize them. Although many people fear these animals, like almost all reptiles, if they encounter you or you happen to encounter them, all they really want to do is get away from you. Even though they possess a myriad of weapons to hunt their prey and defend themselves from potential predators, they don't chase or attack people unprovoked. Truth be told, these animals are actually very shy. Their venom is also not strong enough to cause any significant damage to humans in the case of an incidental bite. I for one hope that we as humans can learn a mutual respect for such an amazing animal, and if you are lucky enough to see one of these beautiful, elusive reptiles in the wild, keep your distance and observe them from afar before they dart into a burrow. Varanus griseus are some of the most amazing and interesting reptiles in the world, but one of their close relatives, who was a more recent discovery, may be even more unbelievable and flat out dragon-like. This is Varanus nestorovi, otherwise known as the Nestorov's Desert Monitor, named after its discoverer, Peter Vlad... Okay, for real. I mean, it's pl someone please, who's coming up with these names? Bro, just say the name. Okay, it's just okay, It's on the paper, okay, just fine, say it. Fine, I'll say it. Jeez. Vladimirovich Nestrov, who uncovered this animal sometime during his lifetime between 1883 and 1941. Now while this special lizard was discovered only about 50 to 100 years after Varanus griseus, it was classified as a subspecies up until 2015, where it was finally recognized as its own species, and rightfully so. While it sports a similar look with a large head and muscular body, it also possesses a more concave and blockier head, as well as raised scales around its neck, ones that are even more pronounced than the raised scales of actual roughneck monitors. These scales are honestly more like spines and are strongest on the side of the animal's neck. The actual function of these spines are not known, but we can infer that they're used for defense from predators, much like the spiny tail of Varanus acanthurus or the spiny-tailed monitor. They may also be used similarly to roughneck monitors for protection from predators and abrasions as they dig burrows. The Nestorov's desert monitor grows between four and five feet but with so few sightings, no one really knows much about them, let alone how big they can truly get. There have only been about nine observations total, ever, and they seem to be mostly restricted to the foothills of the western and southwestern Zagros Mountains in Iraq. Although there is next to no information about this monitor actually available to the public, they're without a doubt one of the most interesting reptiles on the planet. Let me know what you guys think about these almost mythical looking animals. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell so that you never miss another upload. Leave a like on this video and comment down below if you learned anything or what species you want to spotlight on next. I appreciate y'all for watching and I will definitely see you in the next video.